Hey guys, Axton here. Recently I've been using Megascans a lot for my landscape materials, and I figured I would do a quick tutorial on my method for setting up your landscape materials with Megascans. Um, it's based on somebody else's method, which I will link in the description if you want to poke around in that as well. Um, I found it to be one of the better ways to implement Megascans materials in-game. It can be used for things besides landscape materials, but this tutorial is going to be specifically centered around landscape materials. Um, so if you want to use it for other stuff, you're going to have to just extrapolate from this tutorial. But you should learn pretty much everything you need to know just from this. So just to start off, this will probably be in two parts. The first part will be talking about how to convert the Yehorivka material to uh, the material that we're going to be using. And the second part will be talking about how to take your Megascans assets that you download from their site and convert them into something that can be used with this technique. Um, the second one will probably be a lot shorter than this one. This one might go on for a little while. So just to start off with, I've created a uh, folder in here and a test map. And I'm going to be copying over the Yehirivka Master Optimized. Um, and I'm just going to copy it into a folder called Terrain. It doesn't need to be called Terrain, but that's just what I'm using. And I'm also going to copy a material function. Uh, make sure you don't copy any of these material functions. You should be copying from the Optimized Function folder because we're using the Optimized Material. So I'm just going to copy optimized dirt over. And now that we have those, I'm going to open them both up and bring them over here so you can see them. So these are the default Yehirivka materials you're probably familiar with if you've uh, messed with that or you've done my other tutorials. Uh, this is kind of spaghetti right now. This isn't too bad. But we're going to clean them up and we're going to change quite a lot in both of them. So first of all, for this tutorial I'm only going to be using one layer. Um, the method for adding more layers is simply just to add new layers to the blends and plug it in. Um, but just for simplicity and time's sake I'm only going to be using one layer. And I will show you the technique how to add more layers, I just won't be making more than one. So I'm just going to get rid of the grass right now. Um, I already showed you how that worked in a different tutorial, so if you want to keep using it, then uh, keep using it, but I don't need it for here. And I'm also going to get rid of these notes because we don't need them. So I'm just going to get all the layers deleted as well, and we're not going to be using the variation mask for this. Um, if you know what it does and you need to use it, you can. There's nothing stopping you, but we're only going to be using the macro texture variation. And we're also going to delete these two layer blends and I'm just going to remove all from the very top one and I'm just going to add one called dirt. And it's going to stay as a weight blend. Um, this method doesn't work very well with height blends, but I'll touch on that more in a couple of minutes towards the end of the video. But for now I'm just going to add dirt and I think I'll add a second layer called grass just so that way you can see how it works, but uh, I won't be making a grass material in this tutorial. So I'm just going to copy that down to these two, and I'm also going to do something a little strange. I'm going to copy the roughness, and I'm just going to add it in between the diffuse and the roughness. And the reason I'm doing this is we're going to rename this specular because we're going to be using a specular channel for our material here. And OWI doesn't do this, but honestly, after moving to a workflow that uses specular, uh, I I think for for scanned in PBR materials, there's kind of no going back to the old stuff. It's just a superior technique. For handmade stuff, maybe not, but for scan materials, I really like it. So we're just going to be plugging in the specular to the specular, the roughness to the roughness, and the normal to the normal. And then in between the specular output and the specular, we're going to be adding some nodes. So first one is going to be a power node. And we're just going to leave it as to the second power. And we're going to also add a multiply node and a constant, which you can add by holding down the one key and clicking. And then we're going to set the constant to 0.33. And we're going to plug it into the B input of the multiply and we're going to plug in the power to the A input. And then we're going to add a uh, linear interpret node, so right there. And it's going to lerp between the power node in A and the multiply in B. 
and I'm just going to put that right there, kind of set it up like that. And then we're just going to get a Fresnel node. And it doesn't have to have anything plugged into it. We're just going to set it right here. And the default options should be just fine. You can mess with it a little bit. But what this whole cluster of nodes is basically doing is when you have a specular value on a material and you have a roughness that isn't 1, you tend to get a kind of artifact sort of happening where in UE4 you get a lot of shininess on the terrain from the sun and it kind of looked like it made out of plastic. So basically what this is doing is it's removing that shininess. It's making it look more like an actual material. Um, and it's just kind of a side effect of how PBR rendering works. But I won't touch on that too much in this tutorial. And then for the roughness, um, I tend to multiply mine by anywhere between 1.3 to 1.5. You don't have to if you feel like yours looks okay, but I tend to like my materials a little bit more on the rough side. Um, I don't like super shiny stuff. I don't think it looks very good with foliage. And then we're also going to be adding a multiply node and an add node onto that. And we're going to be changing the multiply to 2 and the add to negative 0.5, which really it should probably be a subtract node, but this is just the way that I do it. It's not really any simpler, just kind of a quirk. And then we're just going to plug that up to our normal as well. And the reason we're doing this is because um, we're going to be packing our normals later on, uh, which means we're going to be packing multiple uh, image files into the same image. And this is just kind of it's part of the process of unpacking it. Some of the process is going to be done in the uh, in the material function, but this is just the part that doesn't need to be done in the material function. So now we're just going to grab our dirt material function and drag it in, and we're going to plug the diffuse into the diffuse, the layer dirt, and the roughness into ah yes. Um, so we should probably touch on this just for right now is probably a great time. We're going to be changing the height output to a specular output. Uh, because we're not going to be using height for this. Um, like I said, it doesn't work very well for height blends. If you do need to use a height blend, I will talk about that towards the end of the video. But for now we're just going to change the output to a specular output. And we're going to make the order 2 so that way it actually orders correctly. And we're just going to click apply on that so when we come back here we should have a specular output. And we're going to plug that into our layers here. And then for the variation, we're going to go back into our material function. There's this little bit of code right here that in my opinion really doesn't need to be in the material function. It could just be in the master material, and that way you're not calculating it multiple times for however many layers you have. So we're just going to copy the whole thing, and actually I guess I should copy the comment as well. And we're just going to paste it right in here, Control c Control v and then all we're going to do is, we're going to, like it's plugged in here, we're going to plug the output of the variation into the alpha of the uh, lerp node. And then we're just going to plug that straight into the macro variation of the material function. Um, what this basically does, if you're not aware, is it tiles a couple of noise textures and then it multiplies them onto the uh, diffuse of the material. Which basically just kind of breaks up the tiling and makes it look a little bit nicer. So now that we have that, we're just going to remove this, and we're going to plug the variation straight into whatever it's plugged into. So in this case, it's going to be plugged in up here, and it's going to be plugged in down here. So now that we've bypassed this, we can just delete it. And that cleans up the material a little bit and makes it slightly more efficient. So that's pretty much all the work we're going to be doing to this main material here. Um, to add more layers, what you would do is just add a layer here, and you would take the material function that you've made and just plug it right in. Um, and pretty much once we have this all set up, you can just copy this and add different textures and it'll look fine. Like you don't need to make a different material function for grass, you can just copy this one and add the grass textures, which is what I really like about the mega scans and the specular is that you don't need to tweak values to have different types of materials. You just have enough maps that the textures will make it a different type of a material, if that makes any sense. 
So let's set up this then. Um, we're going to be setting up the far first, but honestly the far and the near are pretty much the same thing. So we're just going to set up the far and then I'll show you how to set up the near. Um, the first thing that we're going to do right off the bat is we're just going to uh, delete these comments and some of the stuff in there as well. Um, for instance, we're going to be deleting this and this. And we're just going to take these multiply nodes and we're just going to bring them right to the center and put them together. And I just like to comment this with a variation comment so that way you know what it's doing. But that slims down the material significantly as well. Um, and we're also going to, before we get too carried away, we're going to add a fourth terrain blend and we're going to plug it in the same way that these are plugged in. So we're going to tr plug the transition into the transition, the start distance into the start distance, end distance into end distance, and so on. Um, and then that's fine. And we're going to plug that into... Ah, yes, so we have to move these down. Uh, we're going to plug this into the specular, because this is going to, going to be our uh, specular blend. And now we should be all good. Yep. There we go. And you can make this a little bit more organized, make sure all the lines are straight and stuff, but I'm not going to cover too much of that here. So you really don't need to mess with any of this stuff. Just understand what it does. All it's doing is blending between a far and a near texture based on these distances. This is the actual distance it blends at, and this is kind of the softness of it, how long it's blending for. So we're going to extend out the far setup just to uh, start creating this. And in this case, we're using a Megascans material, so I should probably explain how that works as well. The albedo is just going to be the albedo, just like it normally is. It's just going to be a color texture. The normal is going to be a bit different. We're going to be packing the, um, the sorry, ambient occlusion into the alpha, and we're going to be packing the roughness into the blue channel. Um, and this is going to mean that we're going to have a lot more kind of masks coming from one texture, which is good for performance because it means we're only using one texture for all those masks. However, it does mean that we have to reconstruct the blue channel because we don't have a blue channel anymore. Thankfully, UE4 allows us to do that pretty easily. So we're also going to be multiplying into the uh, albedo. We're going to be multiplying what will become the ambient occlusion mask, which is the alpha of the normal. So we're just going to place a multiply node there, and then we're going to plug it into what the albedo was going into. And then we're going to multiply the ambient occlusion by itself, which seems a little weird, but it, it works very well for strengthening the ambient occlusion. And we're going to then multiply that by about 0.25, or sorry, 0.5. So now we can go on to reconstructing the blue channel of the normal. And I'm just going to get rid of this by alt-clicking on it so it's not in the way. Um, we're going to take out from the just the regular output of the normal, and we're going to multiply that by 2. And then we're going to add, or I guess subtract one, but I just use an add node for consistency, and we're going to add negative 1 to it. And we're going to mask it, and basically this is just masking it so we only have the red and green channels. And then we're going to use a node called derive normal z, which basically just gets us the blue channel back. Um, and this is really useful because then you can pack information into the blue channel without having to worry about the normal itself, uh, which basically gives us a free texture. So now that we've done that, we can pretty much just uh, plug these into their respective outputs. So in this case, the, um, the output of the derived normal Z would be going into the far texture for the normal, which is down here. The output of the um, the output of the AO being multiplied by itself goes into the specular. 
uh, the far texture for the specular. And that's why we multiplied it by itself, is so that way we can kind of take a specular from the AO, um, which also saves us a texture, uh, which is very useful and saves on performance. And then from there, we pretty much have everything plugged in just fine, except for the roughness, which needs to get plugged in as well. Right here. And I believe that's all we need for the far texture. So for the near texture, we can pretty much just copy all of that over. Um, I'm going to move it back, so that way it's got plenty of space here. And we're just going to copy all of these nodes. And we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to multiply the albedo by the ambi eh, ambient occlusion. Sorry. And we're going to plug the alpha of the normal into that. And we're going to plug the ambient occlusion into both of those nodes. And the roughness just goes straight to the roughness input here. So then, yep, we're just going to do the same thing for this. We're going to plug all of these outputs into the near texture output, except for this, which is going to go into the A of that. And we're also going to plug the uh, specular into the specular near input. And if we did everything right, then this should be correct. Um, you will notice that it's not rendering correctly yet, and it doesn't have a specular yet, uh, because we need to actually pack the textures together. Um, that will come in the next part, but for now, this is pretty much all you have to do to get this to work right. And I don't believe I missed anything. So yeah, that's that's the material that you're going to be using for your Megascan setup. Um, it's not super complicated. The main differences is main differences are that you're reconstructing the blue channel and you're constructing a specular from an AO mask that's baked into the normal uh, which basically gives you like five or six textures for the cost of two. Um, also you notice that there's not an AO output here which is because we're not actually using ambient occlusion in the master material which we could be but UE4's ambient occlusion is actually kind of terrible so what we're doing is we're just multiplying it straight onto the albedo which means that it'll work in every condition lighting wise. There's no uh, no messing about with it. So I also mentioned that there's no good way to do height blend with this. And you can use this for height blend. It'll look okay-ish um, depending on how you do it. Um, obviously Megascan's outputs, um, they have a, a displacement map which is basically just a height map and I'm not like I'm not gonna say that that's a bad idea to use the one thing you have to worry about though is that adds an entire new texture because there's really no place in these two textures that you can fit in another uh, map another mask um, what you could fit into the albedo alpha mask but that actually basically increases the size of the texture to the point where you might as well just add a new texture so I personally don't use height blend, and depending on your your application, you might not really notice the difference between a height blend and a uh, a weight blend. Like in Yamalo, I don't need it, but if you do need it, you can try it. It's not really going to hurt anything. It's just going to make your material render slightly slower. So that's all it is really. Um, the material is pretty much just that. Um, if you want to add more layers, like I mentioned, just add more layers copy this material function over and just use different textures from Megascans. So that's been this first tutorial and in the second one I'm just going to show you how to pack together your normal map and make it so that way it works with this. Uh, thanks for watching.